All right, guys, this is the video to show you how to do test bed exercise seven. Test bed exercise seven is going to use a new control structure, which is called the if then statement. Uh, sorry, if then else. Um, so we'll learn how to use that one today, as well as reviewing several directions that we've already learned. So here it says that. Uh, when the limit switch is held down, motor one should run, and the brain should display motor one running. When the bump switch is being held down, motor two should run, and the brain should display motor two running. When neither is being held down, both motors should be stopped, and the brain is clear. When both the bump and limit switch are pressed, both motors will run. Now, it just so happens that the brain will display motor one running instead of both of them. That's just the way the brain works. There's no way to fix that. All right. So uh, we are going to uh, notice it says down here in the hints, we're going to use the if then else loop, and we're also going to use the forever loop that we learned about in number six. So if we go here to our code, the first thing we're going to need is a forever loop, and that will allow the robot to, like, just like in number six, to continue doing whatever is inside this loop forever. Now this uh, statement right here, if then else and there's also this one if then these statements allow the robot to make a decision so if whatever we tell it in this box happens then the robot will do whatever's in here this statement is if whatever in is in here happens the robot will do what else is in here what is in here if that does not happen if anything else happens it will do what's in here so for this assignment, we want this block. Now, number eight, test bed number eight, does not have a video with it, but I'll just give you a hint that in test bed number eight, you want this one and not this one. But I'm gonna go ahead and get that one out of the way. All right, so we want this. Now you're actually gonna end up needing a total of two of these because we want one for when the bump switch is being held down and one for when the limit switch is being held down. Now notice how they're both inside the same forever loop. As we learned in the last assignment, you cannot have two forever loops. And also be careful that you don't accidentally drag this into the other if the else statement. All right, it's gotta be below the if else statement, but still inside the forever loop. Okay, so just like other videos, I'm gonna show you how to get started and then you'll have to finish it up on your own. So if the, uh, what did it say? If the bump switch is being held down, motor one should run, and the brain should display motor one running. Okay, so we're gonna go to sensing and find bump switch. So this with, has the pointy ends, it's gonna go here in the box. So if bumper A is being pressed, what is the robot going to do? It's going to run, motor motor one if bumper a is not being pressed what do we want to happen we want motor one to not run if you don't do this part then once you start this the motor will just keep on going because there's no direction to tell it to stop that's why we have to have the else part so this will allow the motor to run only when the bump switch is being held down so this time you're not gonna just touch it and let go like we've done before. You have to actually hold it down to get the motor to run. All right, what else did we want to happen? Uh, the brain should display motor one running. All right, so we're gonna need to set the cursor. And then just like in number six, we wanna make sure that we clear the rows beforehand. And then we're going to print Why can't I find it? There it is. Couldn't find it. We're going to print motor one running on brain. Now you can change the color of that if you want. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, just as long as it says motor one running. Okay. Um, now, I will also tell you after I've done some experimenting with this that we need to put the clear in the else as well. 
So that will clear the brain um, when the button is not being held down. All right, so this will, the robot will wait until the bump is pressed. It's going to clear off the brain, set the cursor where it needs to be, print motor one running, and spin the motor. If the bumper is not being pressed, it's going to clear the brain and stop the motor. Now you're going, going to need to do the same thing down here for this if-then statement or if-then-else statement. But obviously this would be for the limit switch and motor 2. So that should be enough to get you, uh, get you started and allow you to be able to finish this assignment.